Hello. Are we live? Did we do it? Have we accomplished? Did we do it? Have we accomplished? Did we do it? We are. Have we accomplished? Hello, everybody. Did we do it? We are. Back Have to back, everybody. A double feature. Live yesterday in my kitchen. Live today in the studio. I assume the audio is good. We're hooked up to the the good mic. The same mic I use for the Psalms, usually. Anyone who's into music production might be interested to know that we're using a Rode K2 with a modified tube as our microphone. It's a custom microphone. It's like a car. You put your own exhaust in it or your own intake. You can't just leave a classic car stock, you know, you gotta, you gotta upgrade the tube. Good, William, I appreciate that vote of confidence. The sound is excellent. Couple other notes for any audio files out there. We're, we're running into a Neve preamp, which is good. And we have an Avalon compressor, sometimes People have sent me via email, what is your signal chain? That's what they'd call it. And that's the signal chain. That's what we're doing. And after we sing our offices, I will do a brief look into the software with you guys. I'll, I'll sh share my screen and show you what some of these offices entailed for recording. Heads up about our Office of the Readings. Yesterday, when we did the Office of the Readings, we used the suggested hymns in the breviary, which is wonderful. Today, we're not going to do that. So again, here's our little breviary four-volume set. It gives us a couple options for suggested hymns, such as, I don't know if anybody else even knows these hymns. I don't know these hymns, which is fine. I mean, maybe we should learn them. The God whom earth and I guess maybe I know this one. The God Whom Earth and Sea and Sky. Oh, it's John Mason Neal. Maybe we have to sing that one. And it's long meter, which means... Long meter means it's eight syllables, then eight syllables, then eight syllables, then eight syllables. So it's very easy to sing. Might have to use John Mason Neal. He's like the best hymnographer ever from the 19th century. If, if you watch Sing the Hours... By the way, thanks everybody for joining us. Um, if you watch Sing the Hours, listen to Sing the Hours a lot, you probably have noticed in the description a lot of John Mason Neal. Well, you might have to use that one. I was going to instead, the other one suggested is some German thing. Ye who own the faith of Jesus. So again, the breviary suggests hymns for use. Those are not the required or official hymns. The official hymns are found in one place for the Liturgy of the Hours. The uh, Novus Ordo Vatican II official hymn, hymnal for the Hours is the Liber Hymnarius, the Book of Hymns. And we have, at Sing the Hours, spent a lot of effort. Shout out to my dad who is watching John Rose that you see in the comments. That's the old, the old man himself. And he has done a great service to this project and to the church in... Um, providing many really good literal translations of the official hymns. There are lots of other good literal translations out there. I hear that the new breviary that they're coming out with any day now since 2012, the updated four-volume set will have a restoration of the official hymns with good translations, and I hear that's in good hands. But until then, until we see the, the updates, we've taken some matters into our own hands. And the official hymn for Office of Readings, if you guys have listened today to Lauds or Vespers or First Vespers, we sang a couple hymns written by Peter Damien from the 11th century. And the, the Office of the Readings hymn is no different, but this is one that slipped through my dad's clutches. He did not translate this one because we don't usually sing the Office of Readings and we didn't do it for the podcast, but... 
dad, I, I hope you will consider adding this to the list. It's called Aurora Velut Fulgida. And it is the official Office of Readings hymn. And I'm going to try and stumble my way through it. I'm not familiar with it, but I'll try and sight read it for you guys. Aurora Velut Fulgida. And I did find, let's see if it's... Yes, okay. A lovely hymnographer, modern hymnographer, Kathleen Pluth. She is responsible for organizing a lot of the suggested hymns in the new Bishop Barron Word on Fire Liturgy of the Hours. So she... Um, has been working with those guys, which is great. She's awesome. She posts a lot of stuff on uh, Chant Cafe, and I've used her and cross-checked her work as a resource many times, so Kathleen Pluth, shout out to you and your excellent work. I found a translation by her on Chant Cafe. She posted this in 2020, so I guess it might be a, a new translation, which is lovely. So we're going to post the link to her translation as I sing it in Latin, and we can add our intellectual understanding to the beauty. How do I post it? I'm going to just put it in the chat. There it is, guys. There's the translation of the office hymn that we're going to use. Okay, we got 31 watching. Nice. Good. Well, we're, we're, we're going to get started really soon here. Again, we're on the feast, the solemnity rather, of the Assumption, which is one of the oldest Christian feasts in the calendar. And it was originally celebrated August 15th by proclamation by an emperor in the East in Constantinople a hundred years before, after the council fathers of, I think it was the second council of Constantinople exchanged notes. The Pope said, why aren't we doing this? This is awesome. August 15th, Assumption. So I think around the turn of the sixth century, it became a universal feast in the East and in the West. So we've been celebrating the Feast of the Dormition, as it was originally called, even in the West, and now the Feast of the Assumption, as we refer to it now. We've been celebrating it for 1,500 years. It's one of the primordial, oldest, official Christian feasts. To put it in perspective, uh, Christmas only was officially promulgated. And of course, officially, for the first couple hundred years of Christianity, Christ, uh, for the first couple hundred years after Christ, Christianity was an illegal religion. So it's difficult to have very many official <laughs> celebrations in the calendar proclamations before Constantine, but Christmas was from the early part of the 4th century. It, it only predates the Feast of the Assumption by about 150 years. So we are so joyful on a day like this, and if you're resting today, celebrating, if you went to Mass, awesome. Here in Boston, it's not a Holy Day of Obligation anymore, which is fine, but the church was packed today. I'm all dressed up because I was cantering at church for the solemnity and we did all the propers from the graduale simplex and man everyone was singing along even the priest at the end said to, to quote father patrick he said i am so edified right now because i don't think i've ever heard a congregation without a choir sing as fully and loudly as you guys did and it was quite quite spectacular i have to agree with father patrick so if you are at St. Paul's today in Cambridge singing, then good job. You guys sounded absolutely amazing in plain chant. We even sang the Gloria and the Credo. Father Patrick said, I'm going to sing the Credo. We're going to do it. Mass one. Let's go. And I've never even sung the Credo. So I stumbled along with him and he just was filled with the Holy Spirit and song today. So thank you, Father Patrick. And also, by the way, from the earliest days of Sing the Hours, the first person I called was Father Patrick because he's a chant nerd. And back when I was doing things, strangely, he helped me settle into some basic knowledge of chant, gave me a few lessons. So thank you, Father Patrick, for your faithfulness to the beauty of the church and to the music of the church. And that's, by the way, the same parish that when... You asked me where to send checks to, I have you send it to St. Paul's Parish to support Sing the Hours. So 29 Mount, 29 Mount Auburn Street, Cambridge, Massachusetts, if 
you want to support our work with a direct donation, a direct check, you can write it out to Paul Rose and send it to St. Paul's Parish in Cambridge. Okay. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Let's do the Office of Readings. It's kind of late in the day to do it, but again, this office can be done anytime. It's 4 p.m. here on the East Coast. We got some lovely psalms and antiphons. And we're going to do the Te Deum again because it's a solemnity. We'll stumble our way through it again, which is very exciting. I love the Te Deum. You guys heard all about my, uh, you, you guys heard my Paul Meeky rant yesterday. Okay. All right. If you have a four volume set and you happen to have it in front of you, we're starting on page... I actually completely lost my place. This is a good start. This is a really good start. Go sing the hours. Oh, there it is. Okay, the red tab. These books are confusing, man. That's why something like the Word on Fire offering are so helpful, because you get a physical book and blah, blah, blah. All right. Let's do it. Deus in adiatorium meum intente, Domine ad adjuvandum me festina, Gloria Patria et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Alleluia. Aurora velut fulgida, Aceli mea ad culmina, Ut sol Maria splendida, Tam quam luna polcerima, Regina mundi hodie, Thronum concedit gloriae, Illumen ixa filium, Qui est ante lucerifum, Assumpta super angelos, Omnes chorus celitum, Quinta sanctorum medita, Transcendit una femina, Quem foverat in gremio, Locarat in presepio, Non regem super omnia, Patris videt in gloria, Pro nobis virgo virginum, tuum despoche filium, per quam nostra susceperat, ut sua nobis prebeat. Sit laus patricum filio, et spiritu paraclito, qui te precuntis celica 
exor naverunt gloria. Amen. Arise, O Virgin Queen, you are forever worthy of our praise. Take your place in the glorious dwelling place of the Eternal King. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart, who desires not worthless things, who has sworn so as t- who has not sworn so as to deceive his neighbor. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, the mighty, the valiant, the Lord, the valiant in war. O gates, lift high your heads, grow higher ancient doors, let him enter the King of glory. Who is he, the King of glory? He, the Lord of armies, He is the King of glory. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Arise, O Virgin Queen, You are forever worthy of our praise. Take your place in the glorious dwelling place of the Eternal King. The Lord has chosen her, his loved one from the beginning. He has taken her to live with him. God is for us a refuge and strength, a helper close at hand in time of distress. So we shall not fear though the earth should rock, though the mountains fall into the depths of the sea, even though its waters rage and foam even though the mountains be shaken by its waves. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The waters of a river give joy to God's city, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within it, cannot be shaken. God will help it at the dawning of the day. Nations are in tumult, kingdoms are shaken. He lifts his voice, the earth shrinks away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, consider the works of the Lord, the redoubtable deeds he has done on the earth. He puts an end to wars over all the earth. 
The bow he breaks, the spear he snaps. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. Supreme among the nations, supreme on the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Gloria Patria et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. The Lord has chosen her, his loved one from the beginning. He has taken her to live with him. (sighs) Glorious things are said of you, O Virgin Mary, on the holy mountain is his city, cherished by the Lord. The Lord prefers the gates of Zion to all Jacob's dwellings. Of you are told glorious things. O city of God, Babylon and Egypt I will count among those who know me, Philistia, Tyre, Ethiopia, these will be her children, and Zion shall be called Mother. For all shall be her children. It is he, the Lord Most High, who gives each his place. In his register of peoples he writes, These are her children. And while they dance they will sing, In you all find their home. Gloria Patria et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Glorious things are said of you, O Virgin Mary. Blessed are you, Mary, because you believed. The Lord's words to you have been fulfilled. A reading from the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesians. I have never stopped thanking God for you and recommending you in my prayers. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, grant you a spirit of wisdom and insight to know him clearly. May he enlighten your innermost vision that you may know the great hope to which he has called you, the wealth of his glorious heritage to be distributed among the members of the church, and the immeasurable scope of his power in us who believe. It is like the strength he showed in raising Christ from the dead and seating him at his right hand in heaven high above every principality, power, virtue, and domination, and every name that can be given in this age or in the age to come. He has put all things under Christ's feet and has made him, thus exalted, 
head of the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills the universe in all its parts. You were dead because of your sins and offenses, as you gave allegiance to the present age and to the prince of the air, that spirit who is even now at work among the rebellious. All of us were once of their company. We lived at the level of the flesh, following every whim and fancy, and so by nature deserved God's wrath like the rest. But God is rich in mercy. Because of his great love for us, he brought us to life with Christ when we were dead in sin. By this favor, you were saved. Both with and in Christ Jesus, he raised us up and gave us a place in the heavens, that in the ages to come he might display the great wealth of his favor, manifested by his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. I repeat, it is owing to his favor that salvation is yours through faith. This is not your own doing. It is God's gift. Neither is it a reward for anything you have accomplished. So let no one pride himself on it. We are truly his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to lead the life of good deeds, which God prepared for us in advance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How lovely and beautiful are you, O Virgin Mary. You have left this world to be joined with Christ, adorned with heavenly power. You shine forth like the sun among the saints. The angels rejoice and the archangels sing your praises, O Virgin Mary. Adorned with heavenly power, you shine forth like the sun among the saints. From the Apostolic Constitution, Muni Fentissimus Deus, by Pope Pius XII. In their homilies and sermons on this feast, the Holy Fathers and great doctors spoke of the Assumption of the Mother of God as something already familiar and accepted by the faithful. They gave it greater clarity in their preaching and used more profound arguments in setting out its nature and meaning. Above all, they brought out more clearly the fact that what is commemorated in this feast is not simply the total absence of corruption from the dead body of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but also her triumph over death and her glorification in heaven. After the pattern set by her only Son, Jesus Christ. Thus, St. John Damascene, preeminent as the great preacher of this truth of tradition, speaks with powerful eloquence when he relates the bodily assumption of the loving Mother of God to her other gifts and privileges. He writes, quote, It was necessary that she who had preserved her virginity inviolate in childbirth should also have her body kept free from all corruption after death. It was necessary that she who had carried the Creator as a child on her breast should dwell in the tabernacles of God. It was necessary that the bride espoused by the Father should make her home in the bridal chambers of heaven. It was necessary that she who had gazed on her crucified Son 
and been pierced in the heart by the sword of sorrow, which she had escaped in giving him birth, should contemplate him seated with the father. It was necessary that the mother of God should share the possessions of her son and be venerated by every creature as the mother and handmaid of God. End quote. Saint Germanus of Constantinople considered that it was in keeping not only with her divine motherhood, but also with the unique sanctity of her virginal body, that it was incorrupt and carried up to heaven. He writes, quote, In the words of Scripture, you appear in beauty. Your virginal body is entirely holy, entirely chaste, entirely the house of God. So that for this reason also it is henceforth a stranger to decay, a body changed because a human body, to a preeminent life of incorruptibility, but still a living body, excelling in splendor, a body inviolate and sharing in the perfection of life. End quote. Another early author declares, quote, Therefore, as the most glorious mother of Christ, our God and Savior, giver of life and immortality, she is enlivened by him to share in eternal incorruptibility of body with him, who raised her from the tomb and took her up to himself in a way he alone can tell. End quote. All these reasonings and considerations of the Holy Fathers rest on Scripture as their ultimate foundation. Scripture portrays the loving Mother of God almost before our very eyes as most intimately united with her Divine Son and always sharing in His destiny. Above all, it must be noted that from the second century, the Holy Fathers present the Virgin Mary as the new Eve, most closely associated with the new Adam, though subject to him in the struggle against the enemy from the nether world. This struggle, as the first promise of a Redeemer implies, was to end in perfect victory over sin and death, always linked together in the writings of the Apostle of the Gentiles. Therefore, just as the glorious resurrection of Christ was an essential part of this victory and its final trophy, so the struggle shared by the Blessed Virgin and her Son was to end in the glorification of her virginal body. As the same Apostle says, it is written, When this mortal body has clothed itself in immortality, then will be fulfilled the word of Scripture. Death is swallowed up in victory. Hence, the August Mother of God, mysteriously united from all eternity with Jesus Christ in one and the same decree of predestination, immaculate in her conception, a virgin and violet in her divine motherhood, the wholehearted companion of the divine Redeemer who won complete victory over sin and its consequences, gained at last the supreme crown of her privileges, to be preserved immune from the corruption of the tomb, and, like her son, when death had been conquered, to be carried up, body and soul, to the exalted glory of heaven, there to sit in splendor at the right hand of her son, the immortal king of the ages. Pope Saint Pius the Twelfth, pray for us. This is the glorious day on which the Virgin Mother of God was taken up to heaven. Let us sing these words in her praise. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. 
Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Happy are you, Holy Virgin Mary, and most worthy of all praise. For from your womb Christ the Son of Justice has risen. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Te Deum laudamus, Te Dominum confitemur, Te Eternum Patrem, Omnis Terra Veneratur, Tibi Omnes Angeli, Tibi Celi et Universe Potestate, Tibi cherubim et seraphim, incessabili voce proclamant, Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaoth, pleni sunt celi et terra, Majestatis gloriae Tue, Tu gloriosus, Apostolorum Chorus, Te profetarum laudabilis numerus, Te martyrum candidatus lauda. Lauda exercitus, te per orbem terrarum, sancta confitator ecclesiae, patrem, immense majestatis, venerandum tuum verum, et unicum filium, Sanctum coque, patra, paraclitum spiritum, tu rex gloriae Christe, tu, tu patris, semper eternus es filius, tu ad liberandum subsepturus hominem, Non horuisti virginis uterum, tu ve victum mortis aculeo, aperuisti credensibus renia celorum, tu ad exteram dei sedes in gloria patris, iudex crederis, Esse venturus, tu ergo que sumus tuis famulis subveni, quos preciosis sanguine redemisti, eterna fac, cum sanctis tuis in gloria numerari. Salvum fac populum tuum, Domine, et benedicere reda dita ti 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 tue, et rege et eos, et extole ilos, Usque in eternum, per singulos dies, benedicimus te, et laudamus nomen tuum in seculum, et in seculum seculi. Dignare din, domini die, 
Isto sine peccato nos custo dire, miserere nostri domine, miserere nostri. Fiat misericordia tua, domine super nos, quem ad modum speravimus in te. In te, Domine, speravi, nos confundar in eternum. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord and give him thanks. Amen. I messed up some of those intervals in the Te Deum, but we got through it. I think it's getting better. A couple more days, a couple more Sundays, I'll have it. And we can maybe record it. But it's so beautiful. I spent enough time yesterday ranting about the Te Deum, so I'll spare you guys the enthusiasm. Let me just make sure I didn't get any urgent messages from my mother I saw she texted me about 10 times during the live stream maybe she you know maybe there's like a piece of sleep in my eyes or a stain on my shirt or something we're about to find out what the bad news is everybody what did my mother tell me Uh, all good things. Looks like we're doing well. Thanks for the encouragement, Mama. Happy, uh, I think this might be Mother's Day in some countries. Is it? You guys can fact check me on that. I know St. Joseph's is Father's Day in Italy and a lot of other countries, but anyway, we love our mamas, earthly and heavenly. We love mamas. All right, so let's break it down. We did tone three. For the first psalm, Psalm 24, that's my favorite to use with Psalm 24. And by the way, I've been doing a lot of digging, 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 digging. I don't know what's going on with my diction suddenly. There are the standard psalm tones. So there's a book that was released right before Vatican II, which put all the current chants of the church in one massive volume. You can find a PDF on, of it online. It's called the Liber Usualis, just just the usual book. Can you guys see it? That's my Lee Bear. So here's um, its psalm tones. You guys have seen me pull this out on a live stream before. So we use tone three, which in modern notation looks like this. Wait, can you guys see it? There we go. See, this is tone three. So it would be the Lord's is the earth and its fullness. You see? You see that? And its fullness. Love that. And then you go to the second part of each line, the ending. The world and all its... Or we'll do this. I, I like ending A. The world and all its peoples. 
beauteous. But, but, here's some crazy trivia for you guys. It's slightly different from the Tonus Antiquus. So the old manuscripts we find of Psalm Tome 3 are a little bit different. Just a little bit. And I'm going to show you guys the truth. You guys will see the truth. Um, sometimes bad things happen to good people. The Lord's here it is. Got it. So this is in Latin, but it's okay. You'll 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 get the idea. Um, hold on. There's a knock at my door. People. So my house is always an open house. People are just running in and out. It's probably a friend of mine. Let me tell them we're doing a live. Oh, it's my uncle. So I'm doing a live stream. You want to come join? Yeah, yeah. Just just so you know, because he, he's he's okay. He he's 88 years old. People, so he might not understand that. You're you're in front of a bunch of people right now. They can all see you and hear you. So, you are live. You are public. You are on camera. You 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 can say whatever you want. Just you know. Don't snore. Don't snore, Uncle Gino. This is Uncle Gino, everybody. Yeah. All right, so Uncle Gino, we were just telling them about the tonus antiquus of Psalm Tone Three. He he's gonna learn like the rest of you. Okay, so um, let me share my screen here. Um, this is a really cool tool. I don't know who made this, but these people deserve ten million dollars. This is the most thankless work in the whole church, and it's just the greatest gift. You can plug even English into this. You, you And look, like, check this out. You guys, this is insane. I can choose Psalm Tone 8. I can choose Psalm 24. And it will give me the whole sheet music of, pff, of Psalm 24. Look at that. Insane to that Psalm Tone. And then I can toggle the Psalm Tone. I can even do Solemn Tone, which would be Domini. Domini estera et plenitudo eus. I love that one. That's Psalm Tone 8. You, you, you guys have probably heard me do that on the Magnificat a million times. But anyway, so Tone 3, look, uh, we'll do regular. As you can see, Tone 3, just like we saw it in the Liber, the modern notation is Domini. I messed that up. Domini est terra et pleni tu doeus, orbis terrarum qui habitant in eo. See, and it's doing ending B, but I like to do ending A. In eo. Can you guys all see this? Am I still live? I haven't really been looking at the. Let me just just make sure we're still rolling. I assume I'm still live. Cool. All right. So, but the tonus antiquus sounded a little more metal. That's probably the wrong word. A little more like moody and hardcore. So, like, check it out. Domini. That's this one. It starts here. But if we ch if we check antiquus, the ancient version of it, it's the exact same. Except, let me make sure it's on A, the one I like. What the heck? Do I like A two? I confused. I guess this one has a couple differences, because check it out. Um, dom. No, no, it's, it's good. We got it. Sorry. Instead of dom, it's domi. See? It's now only one step under. Isn't that nuts? It switches. We we go up a whole, like, third here. Domi. Ni astera et plenty tu doeus. Domi. Whereas this one... The Antiquo, it doesn't do that. So, see? Pretty nice. It's different, but it's cool. I like it. Anyway, this is a great tool. It's just, I typed in Psalm Tone Tool is what it's called on Google, and you can find it. And you might you might be able to learn some Latin and some chant. It's pretty sweet. We love it. Sorry, that was totally nerding out and unnecessary. But back to the Office of Readings, we did Psalm Tone 3 for that one. And then we did Psalm Tone 2 for Psalm 46. And then for Psalm 
87, we did Psalm Tone 1. Hope you guys liked it. They all say hello, Uncle Gino. They're typing hello to you. Do you have anything to say to the people? Hello. He says hello. Uncle Gino's the man. He went to Mass today. How was Mass today, Uncle? It was beautiful. Wasn't it? Wasn't everybody singing? Everyone was singing. It was lovely. But some of the, the antiphons we sang didn't line up with what you had, right? Well, the, the notes didn't. Yeah. But, uh... I handed Uncle something that, of course, as you guys can tell, I do a lot of things last minute. I was cantering, and I switched some things around. <laughs> so... It's not something you should do to a, to, to an, an old, respectable gentleman like Uncle Gino. It's just not not Christian. Right, Uncle? Mm. Um, fine. Let's break down the reading a little bit. We're doing a little recap right now of the Office of Readings we just sang, Uncle. We're going to break down the reading. I love those readings. Weren't they beautiful? The first reading is a beautiful testament to the Catholic doctrine of grace alone. Grace alone is the root of all all of our good, our salvation, and it's nowhere manifest. And hopeful than in the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, because these gifts were given to her completely by the grace of our Lord. And there's hope for our bodies. Because Jesus is special, right? He's fully God and fully man. And so when Jesus ascends into heaven and uh, leaves the party for a little while, we think, oh, you know, could that really happen to me? Could my body really be a participant in eternity? Because Jesus is special. He's got all that God, 100% of God in him. Mary blows any doubt out of the water because fully a human and just a lowly maiden a lowly servant a handmaid of the Lord God in his mercy and his grace took her body and soul into heaven and if we pull up the I lost my readings people where'd I put them Gino where'd I put my readings you'll find it okay thanks Gino you got it right I'm going to get it, Gino. Great. Okay, so... Um, and this is what baptism is all about. Notice how there's no... There's no background checks for baptism. That's why we can baptize a baby who's never done a good thing in their life. Imagine if we had to stack bricks and do some good works in order to approach grace and baptism and be saved. Nobody could get baptized. And if people did, they could boast. But St. Paul lays it down. He says, let no one pride himself in it. That's why we baptize infants. Because they don't need good works. They don't need good works to be born again of Christ. It's a free gift. And that's why anyone, no matter what life they lived, can get baptized even on their deathbed and receive the same heavenly reward. And that's why the Virgin Mary despite being an ordinary girl from Palestine, was made extraordinary. And moving to the second reading, I love it how St. John of Damascus talks about her resplendent body, like how she was with Christ in his crucifixion and therefore is with Christ in his glory. I like how in the anonymous author that's quoted by Pius XII, it says, Christ raised her from the tomb and took her up to himself in a way he alone can tell. Just like there's 28, 29 years of silence in Nazareth, the family life in Nazareth was just secret, the secret of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. And at the end, when she's brought body and soul into heaven, that's just a family secret, <laughs> according to this author. It's beautiful. And St. Germanus of Constantinople is quoted as saying, Mary appears in beauty. I loved that. Still a living body, excelling in splendor. Ooh. 
that makes me think of the, the various Marian apparitions. I'm going to share with you guys an apparition you may have not heard of before. It's one of the most famous in history, but it's less famous in terms of devotion in the West, it is Our Lady of Zaitun. Have any of you guys ever heard of Our Lady of Zaitun? So, in a suburb of Cairo, Zaitun, in the, the late part of the 1960s, Our Lady appeared on top of a church in resplendent light on April 2nd, 1968. This is a modern apparition. She appeared on the top of the church. You, you guys can look it up on Wikipedia and do your own reading. I'll just briefly discuss it. You can see the image. She just appeared in light, just like St. Germanus of Constantinople said. It's Our Lady of Zaitun. And she appeared weekly in a period of two to three years, my friends. Two to three years she appeared weekly. Um, it's been approved by the Coptic Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. We also have approved it. So this is a legit, a legitimate um, apparition. It's even approved by Islam. That's how just mind-blowing this apparition was and how public the apparitions were allegedly witnessed by General by President Gamal Abdel Nasser. No device was found within a radius of 15 miles capable of projecting the image. With no alternative explanation and approval from religious and politi political leaders, the Egyptian government, the secular and Islamic officials of the Egyptian government accepted the apparitions as true. When I was a young boy, I used to think, why doesn't Mary or Jesus just appear to the world? Like, wouldn't everybody be converted? I literally used to think as a kid if they were just on a rooftop. Like, if they just appeared on top of the Super 88 and down near my house. Like, imagine Gino, if Gino just, if, if Jesus just appeared at the star market, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't everybody believe? No. See, exactly. Gino gets it. Gino's, Gino's too wise and too old to know. Not everybody would believe. Because, I mean, it happened three years straight. Too easy. Mary appeared, and in the apparitions, mil there are several million people who witnessed it. Jesus was run. The child Jesus was running around on top of the basilica, and they were shrouded in light, and everybody felt like Mary was looking right at them, because Mary loves every human, all of her children, especially her baptized, fully. So if, if you haven't looked up Our Lady of Zaitun, and if you need a uh, injection of faith and hope, and honor of Our Blessed Virgin Mary, shrouded in light, look up Our Lady of Zaitun. Was that anybody's first time hearing of that? If, if we have anybody Egyptian and any Egyptian people watching, they're like, oh, dude, we have we grew up with Our Lady of Zaitun. I'm probably even saying it wrong. I don't know how to say Zaitun. I'm adding a little twist to it. Gino, how do you say Zaitun? I think it's probably right. Zaitun is Zaitun. Yeah. My uncle's a linguist, so yeah. he should not. Oh, he, he doesn't want me to start singing his praises. He's actually my great uncle, and I would posit he's my greatest uncle. All right, let's do some Q&A. I think that's a good recap of our Office of the Readings. Um, do you guys want to do a little bit of Q&A? We've already been going for almost an hour. we got about 50 people watching right now. Already 1,000 people have watched our live stream yesterday. So, I mean, if you have questions in the future that you want to be discussed on live stream, just email them to us. Chelsea, mind the email for me today on very short notice because, once again... I'm a crazy person, and uh, so thank you to Chelsea Morris. Keep Chelsea in your prayers. Chelsea's the best. And she um, has seven questions for me here from our email and comments, and we'll start with these, okay? So question one from Sean Doyle. He says, I'm wondering about the settings you use for the antiphons and psalm verses. I'm aware of a couple of existing settings, such as the Mundelein Psalter. It doesn't sound like you're using that. It sounds like you're using Gregorian psalm tones, but maybe modifying them. Are you harmonizing them yourself as well? How do you decide which tone to use for each psalm, or do you have a resource you're following? Amazing questions. Let's take them one at a time. Number one, I'm using Gregorian psalm tones primarily, and a few psalm tones that we made up, which are Eastern in their modality. So like for sometimes, and I, I actually got another email, which I'll just throw into this one, from a woman who asked what psalm tone I was using, um, last week, I forget for which psalm, but let me show you m one of my Eastern ones sounds like this. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. Um, we'll sing it in daytime prayer in a minute, but I'll give you a little sneak peek. 
So let's pull up daytime prayer. We're going to do cycle three of daytime prayer, optional, the complimentary psalmody. All right, so let me find it. All right. Mm -hmm. Now I'm forgetting my own tune. Just give me a second. <laughs> Gino, I'm a miserable failure. Here we go. Uh, what? What? There it is. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. On our lips there were songs. So that's one that we do, an Eastern one. And I probably picked it up from somewhere. I used to go to a lot of Orthodox services, a lot, a lot of Byzantine services. Shout out to the Church St. Basil's in, uh, San, in Los Gatos, California, Byzantine Catholic. Oh my gosh, you formed me liturgically. Beautiful. If you ever visit San Jose, check out St. Basil's. Beautiful liturgy. Maybe I picked it up from there. I don't remember where I picked it up, but it just feels right, and people love it. So that's one of our Eastern ones. Also another one, we just go up and down, very easy. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. On our lips there were songs. Easy. And then sometimes you can go even further down. The heathens themselves said, What marvels the Lord worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Do, 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 do. And that Eastern-like tone I got from my Uncle Frank when he and I used to call each other up eight years ago and sing The Office every day. He's the one who, I would say, he's my spiritual father musically. He lives in Portland, Oregon. Extremely faithful man. Keep him in your prayers. Frank. And uh, he's his nephew. This is Uncle Gino's nephew, my mother's brother. So you guys are getting my, my whole Italian family tree here. So Uncle Frank lives in, um, in Portland. And when he and I would call each other every day for a year and sing the Liturgy of the Hours, this is a tune that we just did all the time. And it worked out great. And so I don't know if he brought that. He spent a year with monks in India, like in his youth. Right, Gino? Yeah. And I, he... That's one of the places where he learned chant and fell in love with chant. So this might be something used in India. I have no clue. But I got it from Uncle Frank, and that's that. And then the third Eastern one that we do sometimes is, um, well, there's a couple of settings that we do, which we just kind of adapted from various Eastern-like things. And if, if, if you are an Eastern Catholic or an Eastern Orthodox, and you're rolling your eyes at the fact that I'm calling these Eastern tones, I apologize. I'm I'm appropriating your musical tradition, perhaps. But hey, if it, uh, if it follows an internal logic and it's done in plain chant and it's beautiful and true and carries the psalm tone tune, then like, let's do it, right? Um, that's just from my ignorant perspective. They are Eastern. Another one is uh, like, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. On our lips there were songs. So that's another tune that I, I can apply to any psalm, and you probably have heard on the podcast, and that's not very Western. Okay, but usually what we do to answer his question is Gregorian, and we adapt them to English, which takes a little bit of finagling sometimes because the tones have a have a tune that we got to adapt to English but also accents and that's where I've been really trying to improve is with my accents for example we often use we use all these tones a lot now let's pick one let's pick uh, tone two do 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 right and then if there's the little cross a lot of you ask about the cross if there's the cross that just means that you go down for a line. This is the little cross. So do, 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 do. The line that the cross is at the end of will end with just going down two notes, uh, either a second or a first. That's just how it is. I mean, a second or a third. But then you go back to your new, 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 new. So we did this. The Lord of hosts, right? 
The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. So this is the accent. Stronghold. Right? Easy peasy. So that's an example of a, of a Gregorian tone designed for Latin, but we often do it in English. Easy peasy. All of them are adaptable to English with just a little bit of humility and a little bit of finagling. And then how do I choose them? Dude, they, they each have kind of a... Each tone is like a, a spiritual quality to it. Wouldn't you say, Uncle Gino? Like, Gino, what, what emotion does this give you? You ready? Close your eyes. Gino's going to be our guinea pig. Gino, Gino, I, I need you, man. You got to spot me. You ready? What uh, emotion does this give you? When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Emotion, go. Um, a hope. Hope. Aspiration. Okay, how about this? When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Blissful. More blissful. Yep, absolutely. That's a rejoicing psalm. What about this one? When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. More uh, thinking of something in, in, that happened in the past and that was no longer... So longing or like, like like reminiscing or yeah, this is the, the, that's the ninth tone, as you would say, tonus peregrinus. Or we could do, um, when the Lord, when the Lord delivered, when the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our lips there were songs. What about that one, Gino? Sure. Or or even that one is kind of like, it's just recounting the facts. It's very like, it's very neutral. That's a neutral yeah, round. Right. It's round and neutral. Also, Gino, this one is, is an epic one. What do you think about this one? When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. What about that one? Recollection of the past, of, of a, but with a little more oomph, right? A little more, a little yeah, more yeah, awe, a little awe, stronger. strong strength, yeah. awe. Yeah. Every psalm tone has a different uh, vibe, yeah. a different spiritual quality yeah. to it, and depending on the psalm, you just sort of it just comes to you. Like if you do it prayerfully, then it's not a mechanical decision. If you do it prayerfully, if you pray the psalm with the psalm tone, you'll find it. You'll just find it. But you can technically do any psalm with any tone, as this tone generator shows. Check it out. Um, oh, here's the Kathleen Pluth hymn. Where's our tone generator? So, psalm tone tool. Look, we can do, what was the Zion from Bondage to 126? Check it out, homies. Um, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, we can plug in five. In convertendo dominus captivitatem Sion, in facti sumus quasi somniantes. It seemed like a dream, somniantes, see? Wait, then you can change it. Let's do blah, 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 blah. Let's do tone one with the crazy ending. You guys know the crazy ending? It's this one. I love this one. You got to get that crazy ending. Is it the D minus? That's the crazier one. Let's try D D two. No, let's let's do the just the the D. All right, check it out. In convertendo dominus captivitatem Sion. No, no, I messed it up. In convertendo dominus captivitatem Sion. Facti sumus quasi somniantes. But even in this tone, because tone one has a million endings, look at this, people. That's like ten endings. So even different ones of these tones have different vibes. Like, I, I, I want to do the one that goes up at the end. It's so lit. Oh my gosh, check this one out. Is this the one? I think this might be it, but let me try a regular. 
Oh, A3, what does that one look like? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, oh, this is so beautiful. Check it out. In convertendo dominus captivi, captivitatem sion, facti sumis quasi somniantes. Oh, somniantes. Does it get more beautiful than that? Gino, does it get more beautiful than that? It's very lovely, very beautiful. So you just pick what you pray. You pick what you pray. You pick what you pray. Okay, I think that is, I hope that's a good answer. I'm happy to maybe, I don't know. We can talk more about that in a later live stream. JP, the hymn Martyrs Laurenti is dropped in gorgeous. Thank you, where did you find it? Oh, good question. Just at, like at the beginning of the podcast. Gino, we found in Martyrs Laurenti. In the Liber, it's the official hymn. The reason why it connected with you, JP, the reason why you loved it is because your soul knew. This is the this is the official hymn of the church for the Liturgy of the Hours, for, for that day. In Martyris Laurenti. Liber Hymnarius is where we got that hymn, which is the official text of the hymns for the Liturgy of the Hours. Good question. Question three from Tim. Thank you so much for doing this. I really enjoy the podcast. I've been getting Bishop Barron's books, but they're sometimes deviating from your program. I'm sure what he means by that is the occasional different hymn. Yeah, because we we get our hymns often from the Liber Hymnaria. Sometimes it's my dad's translation. Sometimes it's a different hymn. Sometimes it's the hymn given in the official breviary. Bishop Barron chooses his own hymns. And then oftentimes, because there's, there's different options in the rubrics for propers, so if you do the general instruction of the Liturgy of the Hours, there's going to be some variation um, so this is this is the law of the Liturgy of the Hours right here. We look at the general instruction and we get... Um, uh, let's get the uh, proper. Blah, blah, blah. So if we're searching for the proper... So for example... Um, let's find it. So like even here, in private celebration, the calendar of the place or the person's own calendar may be followed except on solemnities and feasts. So there's even variation. There's there's flexibility about what specific memorial you do or feast. Um, let's see what else we got here in the rubrics. If, if we look for propers, um, there's one in the Office of Readings. Blah, 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 blah. Let's find something that's... I like the thing about... Oops. That's my email. I'm clicking weird things. Here we go. Proper general instruction on the Liturgy of the Hours. Let's get back to that. Sorry for the roundabout. Um, what, what were we looking for? We're looking for... Here we go. On memorials without proper antiphons, for example, the antiphon may be taken at will either from the common or from the current week. So sometimes I'll make a decision for in favor of the common, sometimes I'll make a decision in favor of the current week's antiphons, but it doesn't necessarily line up with Bishop Barron's decision. So they'll, they'll make an arbitrary decision because in this particular issue, there's no preference given. It's just at will. They can be taken either A or B, which is frustrating in some ways because then, yeah, you're confused. Where am I getting this? But there, there is some slight flexibility in different parts of the office for any given day. Um, let's keep going and see. So here we go. Proper readings are assigned for solemnities and feasts. Otherwise, the readings are taken from respective commons of saints. But on that note... We have right here um, the antiphon of the invitatory, the hymn. These are the parts that will be different. This 235B gives the most flexibility, everybody. As it says, 
enough if you guys can read it. Hopefully the whole thing is in the screen. The antiphon at the invitatory, the hymn, the short reading, the antiphons at the canticle of Zechariah and of Mary, and the intercessions must be those of the saint if these are given in the proper. Otherwise, they are taken either from the common or from the current week and day. Either from the common or from the current week and day. So if we have a memorial, when is the next memorial? Let's look in our calendar. The next memorial for August that's mandatory is John Eudis, August 19th. Okay, so we're going to type in on ibreviary.com, August 19th, and we're going to get John Eudis. Wait, are we not going to get John Eudis? We're in August, yes? Where is our buddy John Eudis? So I breviary, I guess sometimes they almost never get it wrong. That is shocking to me. I breviary almost always includes propers. So let's go to the 20th because that's St. Bernard. If they don't have that, I will eat my tie. Okay, so here's Bernard. In those places, blah, 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 common, common. But then what I breviary does, it's kind of funny. I breviary doesn't even include the antiphons of, of the day ever or the intercessions of the day, but those are those are usually an option. I got to see if they have. So like, for example, if we look in the back of our book, in order to, in order to know what you have to do, you actually technically need one of these um, in, in order to know what flexibility you have. Um, so in St. Bernard's Feast on the 20th in a few days, it has no proper invitatory antiphon at the beginning. There's no invitatory antiphon mandatory. It simply says, use from the common of doctors or from holy men religious, which is why up here, it says you can, you can do any of these three antiphons, but I breviary is actually wrong because there's a fourth option. It's is that you can also use the antiphon of the day. So the fact that it doesn't supply as a fourth option, the antiphon of the day, is incorrect. It should supply as a fourth option the antiphon of the day. Why? Because there's no proper given and the general instruction of the Liturgy of the Hours says the antiphon at the, in, in, the, antiphon at the invitatory, right, must be those of the saint if these are given in the proper. It's not given in the proper. Otherwise, they are taken either from the common or from the current week or day. So it gives me the, the three common options because in, in, the, in the text it says you can take it from the commons of doctors, holy men, or religious. So like you get three options, but there's also a fourth option because in the rubric there's always an option to get it from the current week and day. So if my decision, my choice of antiphon doesn't line up with Bishop Barron's, I apologize. But as it says in the rubric, it's, it's, it's at will and there is some flexibility. So that's why your text might end up being slightly different sometimes. And I apologize when that happens. Okay. All right. Uh, we don't have much time left. I mean, I'm going way, I thought I'd do this for maximum 45 minutes. We are just going on. This is like an all day live stream. We love it. Okay, so a couple of other things. Um, question four, can you please make more tracks with the hymns you sing that are separate from the prayer so we can practice too? Yes, we will support us. I need to, I got to hire some people, people, people. We, we need some engineers in the studio. I mean, I'm putting Uncle Gino to work, right? And I'm kidding, Uncle. So we need help. So please support us on Patreon. Thank you to everyone who has been supporting us. We have over 300 people. You guys are rock stars. We are able to invest in high quality equipment, but but we really need help personnel. We need to be able to expand our team so we can get this work done. Okay, number five. Have you ever considered releasing some more tutorials, perhaps as a pay paid feature for patrons on Patreon? My kids and, would, and I would love to to learn to be able to sing along with you. This is kind of a tutorial. Question, the answer is yes, Alex. And the tutorials will be more organized as I get more help. I need like three production assistants. Make that 10. We need an army, right? King David had like uh, 200 singers in his choir. I need like at least one more, okay? So let's do it. 
Question number six. I heard that you are starting to visit parishes to give in-person lectures and sing the prayers live to help us all learn. Are you willing to travel to do this? How might we set up that set up that at our parish? Yes, I will come to your parish. Let's do it. Send an email to singthehours at gmail.com. I, I have flown out for talks at parishes. We'll do Liturgy of the Hours on a Sunday. We'll, cause we we got to get it on the parish level. Sacrosanctum Concilium Vatican II wants it in parishes, so we got to do it in parishes. We can't just listen to it on our own at home forever. We got to bring it into the body of Christ in a tangible, structured way. That is the vision of the Council and the will of the Fathers. Question seven from Patty Patterson. I'm a cradle Catholic. I would like to know how you learned the Latin language so prolifically and so intelligently. How can I learn? I think you just got to practice. Um, I learned because my mama is a genius and she's Italian and she went to Boston Latin school and she drilled it into us as kids and because her great uncle G- her uncle Gino is a linguist and Gino correct me if I'm wrong but you helped my mother study her Latin when she was in high school I did. she would come home right. and uncle Gino is the man so for the real answer the real honest answer to Patty's question is how do I know Latin easy uncle Gino Thanks, Uncle. You saved the world. Okay. Let's see if there are any other questions came in during the stream. I don't want to miss any. Oh, yeah. Someone asked if, if we would do the stickers, the super chat, where you can just send us money on YouTube. And my mentor said, yes, do it. So we'll set it up. We'll do it, and you guys can do it that way too. Again, you can also write checks to St. Paul Parish. Sorry, write the check out to Paul Rose, but then send it to St. Paul Parish in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And thank you everyone who's done that for your generosity. Greetings from Aruba, awesome. Love that. Um, Paul, are you, what are you reading and where can we buy it? What am I reading? Oh, in gen- uh, so this is the four volume set. You can buy it online, four volume breviary set. This is the Liber Hymnarius. You can buy it online. Just look up Liber Hymnarius, order one. It's all in Latin, though. Good luck. <laughs> I sang one of your tones at the gospel chant at Mass on Sunday. The organist followed. He loved it, Teresa. Oh, that my, my heart just jolted for joy a little bit. Uh, my pilgrimage. My pilgrimage was awesome. Stephanie, we walked. They walked 220 miles from Boston to Arisville, New York. I only joined the second week, and I got a bum. I, I, I bummed up my ankle on the second day, so I only walked. I probably walked under 80 miles. But my favorite places. I really liked the shrine in Arisville. I would recommend going on pilgrimage there. It's the birthplace of Saint Kateri. There's the a ravine there. You have to go to the ravine because you go through this valley of the shadow of death and you end up in this glade that looks like it's from Narnia or Lord of the Rings and it's a it's a natural reliquary the first American martyr is mar- is buried there secretly somewhere and the nature is out of this world a lot of mosquitoes so wear some bug spray I got bit quite a bit but the the bites were worth it because it was I, I broke down in tears at the site it was very 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 moving and upstate New York is beautiful. It's my first time trampsing through upstate New York. Probably my last time. I mean, I'll visit upstate New York, but not in the same mode. Hobbling along on one and a half feet. Um, but upstate New York, wow. Beautiful place. Props to anyone who's from there. It kind of flies under the radar because everyone... New York City, yeah, but upstate New York is, is gorgeous. Loved it. The four-volume set is called It's called The Liturgy of the Hours. The Liturgy of the Hours? That's what it's called. Can't miss it. Fair warning, they've said since 2012 that they're going to come out with their new edition of these books of the official prayer of the church. Translation is going to be different. This will be rendered obsolete. So you'll find a lot of them online because people are thinking this is going to happen soon. You'll find them on eBay for cheap because normally they're like 150 bucks, but I think you can probably find a discounted one on eBay. This is going to be irrelevant soon and you'll have to get new ones. Just fair warning so you don't feel cheated. Um, 
the publisher. The Word on Fire publication only has, this is published by Catholic Book Publishing Corp. New York, 1975. The Word on Fire ones just have Lauds and Vespers and Night Prayer. So Compline, Lauds, Vespers, Morning Prayer, Evening Prayer. This has all the offices and all of the propers and everything. It has daytime prayer. It has the Office of Readings that we just did in this podcast. It's beauteous. Beauteous. St. Cecilia watching over us. Uncle Gino watching over us. I love Uncle Gino. Okay. All right, peoples. Let's do daytime prayer and close. Any final? Oh, yes. My dad put in the comments, pray for the translation process. Pray that we get a really good breviary for the next 50 years because this is this is going to be status quo for decades when it's done and they're they're working on it really hard people in the church it's kind of a secret affair i don't know who's working on it but whoever is needs our prayer so please pray for it it, it will guide the spiritual sensibility of the church for the next half a century at least thank you all for chatting 90 minutes wow we we really this is a live stream to end all live streams I want to start doing some interviews. If there's people you want me to interview, live stream, discuss, chat, we would we'd we'd love your suggestions. Email us, singthehours at gmail.com. Or if you know somebody, or if you want us to be on your show or something, it's um ten thousand dollars if you want Uncle Gino to join on the show. Otherwise it might be free. But we'll talk. Uncle Gino is his rate is 10000 an hour. Right, Gino? Right. Good. And that's uh, that's euros. He'll only accept euros. Oh. Sorry, Gino. It's all a joke. It's a joke! Oh. All right, we're going to do daytime prayer. Now, the daytime prayer we're going to do, because we're almost at sunset, we're going to do the mid-afternoon complimentary psalmody. So we're not going to do the psalms of the day daytime prayer. We're going to do the complimentary psalmody. And let me just introduce it this way. The comp you can find it, by the way, by going on iBreviary. See? Go on iBreviary. You do daytime prayer. Wrong day. But it it'll be the same every day. The complimentary psalmody is always the same. Daytime prayers. Um, let's see if we can get that complimentary psalmody. Yeah, here it is. So... Wait, what? There's four psalms, maybe because it's a solemnity. Hold on, guys. This is unusual. I think there might be something unique for the solemnity today. Let me look in my book and see what's going on. What is going on? Daytime prayer, gradual psalms. Okay, so... Here's the confusion. In the rubric, it says, in place of Psalm 122, Psalm 129 may be said. In place of Psalm 127, Psalm 131 may be said. But we're gonna we're gonna sing Psalm 127. We're just gonna keep it normal. And these gradual, it's crazy because of the because it's a solemnity. The psalms of the day are actually the complimentary psalmody. That's why you don't see a complimentary psalmody here, is because the psalms for the feast of the assumption are the complimentary psalmody, otherwise known as the gradual psalms. But if we plug in any, any other day and click daytime prayer, you get the psalms of the day. So this is Wednesday in two days. Psalm 119, 94, you get the three selections. But then at any odd hour of the day, meaning if you do it at any time that's not 9 a.m., noon, or 3 p.m., if you want to do additional prayers, you can do at any hour in the morning, 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m., you can do these three psalms, the series one mid-morning in midday, so 11 a.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m., you can do these three psalms as addition, in addition, if you're a priest, to the psalms of the day. Some priests do pray all 12 of these daytime psalms every day. That's probably very rare, though. And then mid-afternoon, which is what we're going to do because that's prescribed for the day on the feast, you get 126, 127, and 128. And since we are now in late afternoon, we're going to squeeze by doing mid-afternoon. 
And we're going to sing it, peoples. And we're just going to do the Hail Mary as our hymn. Gino, you're going to sing with me, okay? Well, okay. Do you mind? I'll try my best. Do you love me, kid? Do. Good. All right, kid. We're going to do it. So I'm going to put it big on the screen so you can see. And you're going to sing it with me. I'll tell you when to sing, okay? Can you see it okay? I the Holy Mother? Over you I can see it. Kid, you're my favorite kid, you know that? Yeah, you got it, you got it, kid. Okay. And there's not three antiphons for mid-afternoon. We're just going to do the first antiphon at the beginning. We're going to blaze through the three psalms and do the second antiphon, okay? Okay. Uh, we got it. And you guys can join us. <gasps> you guys can join us. Okay. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Right, Gino, you can sing this hymn with me. Lord God and maker of all things, creation is upheld by you. While all must change and no decay, you are unchanging, always new. You are man's solace and his shield, his rock secure on which to build. You are the Spirit's tranquil home. In you alone is hope fulfilled. To God the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit render praise. Bless Trinity from age to age, the strength of all our living days. Amen. All right. The Holy Mother of God is exalted in glory above the choirs of angels in the kingdom of heaven. The Holy Mother of God is exalted in glory above the choirs of angels in the kingdom of heaven. When the Lord delivered Zion from bondage, it seemed like a dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our lips there were songs. The the heathens themselves said what marvels the Lord worked for them. What marvels the Lord worked for us. Indeed we were glad. Deliver us, O Lord, from our bondage as streams in dry land. Those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. They go out, they go out full of tears, carrying seed for the sowing. They come back, they come back full of song, carrying their sheaves. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. If the Lord does not build the house, in vain do its builders labor. If the Lord does not watch over the city, in vain do the watchers keep vigil. In vain is your early arising, you're going later to rest. You who toil for the bread you eat, 
When he pours gifts on his beloved while they slumber. Truly sons are a gift from the Lord, a blessing the fruit of the womb. Indeed the sons of youth are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. O oh, the happiness of the man who has filled his quiver with these arrows. He will have no cause for shame when he disputes with his foes in the gateways. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. May you see your children's children in a happy Jerusalem. On Israel, peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together, Gino. The Holy Mother of God is exalted in... Let's start over. The Holy Mother of God is exalted in glory above the choirs of angels in the kingdom of heaven. You can take the reading, Gino. I've highlighted it. Read it. A reading from the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We know that when the earthly tent in which we dwell is destroyed, we have a dwelling provided for us by God, a dwelling in the heavens, not made by hands, but to last forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The, the Lord of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The virgin was taken up to the heavenly bridal chamber, where the king of kings is sealed on a heavenly throne. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Everyone say thank you to Uncle Gino. Let's let's give him props for singing the office. Gino's the man. They say hello from Poland. Poland. Wow. Yeah. Poland, Very Africa, impressed. Holland. Very impressed. Lovely. Very Gino's sister-in-law is Polish. She's my aunt Sandy. We love aunt Sandy. All right. Good job, everybody. We did it. There's a lot of offices. We've been going for almost two hours. Send emails to Chelsea if you want questions answered. We love you guys. Happy feast. Happy solemnity of the Assumption. Say a rosary today. Say a Marian hymn. We're going to end with a Marian hymn. We're going to do my dad's. We'll do it in English and Latin and then in English. The, um... Regina Chaley. Let's see if we can put the link. I wonder if my dad posted it somewhere for the people back at home. 
Dad, is the Regina Chaley on your blog? I don't know. We're going to just go for it. Regina Chaley, Laetare, Alleluia. Quia quem eruisti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. O Queen of Heaven, take delight, Alleluia. He whom you merited to bring to birth, Alleluia. He is risen, just as he said, Alleluia. Pray for us to God, Alleluia. Have a good evening, everybody. Bless you all around the world.